Hello Zebraherd and welcome back to another Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare 3 discussion video. You may know that this weekend is the ninth birthday of the Plants vs Zombies franchise and that things have been rather quiet the last couple months when it comes in terms of PVC and PopCap in general. A lot of people are starting to wonder if anything is coming up soon. And while there haven't been any new PVZ games announced, I figured this weekend is a perfect time to talk about the potential future of the PVZ series, and more specifically, Garden Warfare 3. In today's video, we'll be talking about five different predictions and anticipations that I have for a theoretical Garden Warfare 3. Now, at this moment, Garden Warfare 3 has not been confirmed, but you know, I'm a, I'm a zebra with a dream. I, I would like Garden Warfare 3 to be a thing, so today we're just gonna be talking about if there was a Garden Warfare 3, what would I like to see in it? I wanna hear your guys' as part of this discussion as well, though, so make sure you let me know if you have any kind of thoughts, anticipations, or predictions for a potential Garden Warfare 3 in the future. I would absolutely love to hear them. With all that being said, though, let us get started with my top five predictions for Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 3. Number one a more developed story mode. When PVZ fans learned that Garden Warfare 2 would have an included story mode, unlike Garden Warfare 1, a lot of people got really excited, and for good reason. The story mode in Garden Warfare 2 is a lot of fun, and it's a good way to learn the game, the characters, and get some awesome rewards while doing it. But it's very clear that a story mode could go way more above and beyond than what it did in Garden Warfare 2. GW2's story mode was basically a glorified mission system. You would go to an NPC, he would tell you to do one thing, you go do that thing, you go back to the NPC, the mission is done. The biggest complaint a lot of people had with the story mode was that there was no true narrative to it. There was a mild amount of exposition that would explain why you're going to this place to do this thing, but it never really had a lasting effect. The backyard was exactly the same before the story mode as it was after, the only difference being that you unlock infinity time for completing the story mode. And while infinity time is great, it doesn't really add anything narrative to the world. You never felt like you were making an impact in Garden Warfare's story. And I think we should take a look back at the original Plants vs. Zombies. There was a beginning, there was a middle, and there was an end. There was a solution and an end to the story. I think that Garden Warfare could definitely benefit from something like that in an overhauled story mode that's more than just missions, but a linear story that you follow from beginning to end. We sort of saw a revamped version of a single player story mode with Trials of Gnomus. There were tons of little missions you could do that would eventually get you a major reward, which were Torchwood and Hover Goat. I would like to see something like that in the main story mode of Garden Warfare 3. It would be very, very cool if there was a type of variant or class that was only available for those who have completed the story mode. We sort of got that with Infinity Time, but I feel like Infinity Time was a fun idea, but not a long lasting one. A lot of people agree with me that it gets it's boring pretty quickly, so I think a new class that shows off, hey, I defeated the story mode, would be a very cool way to end Garden Warfare 3's story. Number two, more legendary classes. A lot of people seem to like the legendary inclusions that Garden Warfare 2 had over Garden Warfare 1. If you're not aware, legendaries in Garden Warfare 2 are very special because not only are they difficult to obtain, but they are a little bit better than your average variant. Every legendary character has a meter, which if filled up all the way through a vanquish streak, can make you very, very powerful in one way or another. Every legendary is a little bit different on how that meter is filled up, but it's overall the same. The only problem is that not every class has a legendary, so if you really like Sunflower, well, that's unfortunate because Sunflower doesn't have a legendary, and the same thing with the Soldier or the All-Star, and I think it would be very cool in Garden Warfare 3 that every class has at least one legendary. We already have some classes that have more than one legendary if you include the party classes, but beyond that, I think more legendaries is something a lot of people are looking towards. There's so many great openings for them as well. We still don't have a toxic cactus or a frozen sunflower. Those kind of things would be awesome little fits for a legendary variant. Legendary variants are obviously some of the most sought after and cool looking variants in the game, so I think the more the merrier. Number three, a stronger post game. This one might take a little bit of explaining. 
A lot of people who have reached max rank in Garden Warfare 2 might agree with me with this one. Garden Warfare 1's leveling system is a little bit different than Garden Warfare 2's. In Garden Warfare 1, we had a number of mission-based quests that you had to do to level up classes. Instead of variants specifically, you would only level up classes until they were maximum level. But in Garden Warfare 2, they decided to change it up a little bit because every single variant has its own unique level bar. A character can be leveled up all the way to level 10, which then they can be promoted where you receive 20,000 coins and then you can level them up to level 10 multiple times more until they're finally maxed out. The problem with that is that when a character is maxed out, there isn't really much of a reason to play them. It's much more beneficial just to go play a different character that you don't have maxed out, that way you can keep getting 20,000 coins every time you get them to level 10. What this means for players that are trying to earn up a lot of coins is, is that they never really play their favorite variants because there isn't as much of a benefit to play a mastered character if you have a ton of non-mastered characters. This problem gets even worse if you are max rank in the game because at that point you are just getting less coins in general. Even though you have totally mastered everything in the game, you're getting less coins overall because you're not getting that character promotion bonus. This ends up driving a lot of max rank players away from the game because it becomes even harder to earn up more coins to get all the other abilities, hats, items, and anything else you'd wanna buy. I think there's actually a really easy and fun solution to this, and it's actually borrowing from a game called Team Fortress 2. In Team Fortress 2, you can get a special weapon that's called a strange weapon. It actually isn't that special in TF2, all it is is a counter, so if you had 15 vanquishes with that weapon, it would tell you when you look at that weapon, you've gotten 15 vanquishes with this weapon. What if they had something like that in Garden Warfare 3? They had a golden weapon. Maybe once you master a character, you'll receive a golden weapon for them, and maybe once you hit a threshold of vanquishes, you get a reward. So when you get your brand new golden weapon, you need to get 10 vanquishes. If you do that, you get 1,000 coins. Then your next threshold is 20 vanquishes, and then 50, and then 100, and then 500, then 1,000. And it keeps going up and up until maybe it reaches a cap. But at that point, maybe you, the cap is 5,000 vanquishes. You would get a huge reward for it. Maybe it's 50,000 coins, maybe it's 70,000 coins. And then once you hit that 5,000, the counter restarts, and it just starts at 5,000 every single time. That would give you a whole new reason to play your favorite variants, even if they're mastered, because you could still earn up a potential bonus for it instead of playing other characters you may not like, but they're still yet to be leveled up, so it's worth it for that extra 20,000 coins. That's something I think would make the game a lot more playable, especially for those very experienced players who have already mastered everybody in the game. Number four, maps from Garden Warfare 1. Anybody who has played both Garden Warfare 1 and Garden Warfare 2 will probably tell you that the maps are very different. They have a very different feel to them, and because of that, the strategy and play style are totally different between the two games at times. And this can be accredited to a number of things. You know, there being different characters of different sizes, there being different things like plant bots and zombie bots, and spawnables for both plants and zombies. There's a whole number of reasons on why Garden Warfare 2's maps are different than Garden Warfare 1. But that isn't to say that Garden Warfare 1's map style isn't missed in Garden Warfare 2. Both Garden Warfare 1 and Garden Warfare 2 have some very cool and unique maps, but a lot of players seem to get nostalgic over Garden Warfare 1 maps and how different they were. I think the Garden Warfare 3 should definitely have a mixture of the two, both Garden Warfare 1 and Garden Warfare 2 maps. We saw that at the very beginning of Garden Warfare 2, there was a DLC pack release that had a altered version of the Garden Center called the Aqua Center. It was basically the same map, just ever so slightly tweaked so that characters like the Z-Mech could actually fit through some of the corridors. I can't imagine that took too much effort, and I think that would be very cool to see more maps from Garden Warfare 1 stylized to fit all of the characters together in Garden Warfare 3. Not only would that make it so that there's a ton of variety of maps, but that already, without even adding brand new maps, doubles the amount of maps that were in Garden Warfare 2. Number five, adding plant and zombie heroes. Shortly after the launch of Garden Warfare 2, we had the launch of the mobile card game, Plant vs. Zombies Heroes. This card game introduced a ton of what they call plant and zombie heroes. They're basically what you would imagine Garden Warfare 2 variants are, but even more powerful. And I would love to see some of these characters be integrated into a Garden Warfare 3. 
This is a topic that could go really in depth, so I think I might save some of this for a future video, but imagine if on top of having characters like the Rose and the Super Brains and the Torchwood and the Hover Goat, we had new variants or new classes such as the Captain Combustible or the Professor Brainstorm or Green Shadow and Beta Caratina and Huge Giganticus. There's so many awesome PVZ heroes characters that I would love to see tied up in the Garden Warfare 3 roster. Especially since the PBC Heroes mobile game already provides origin stories for some of the Garden Warfare 2 variants we now know and love. I think it would be very cool to see all of that wrapped together going full circle by having a Garden Warfare type game, but with PBC Heroes type classes. This would totally broaden the scope on what Garden Warfare could be as a series and could be totally, totally different compared to Garden Warfare 1 and Garden Warfare 2. So those are some of my thoughts and predictions on Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 3. Now I do have plenty more predictions I would like to make, but I'll keep it at five for now. If you guys wanna see any more, feel free to let me know how you thought about today's video and I'll think about it. And like I said at the beginning of today's video, be sure to continue the discussion by letting me know your thoughts on my predictions along as letting me know some of your predictions. I love to hear guys' feedback in the comment section. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching today's discussion video on Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 3. Check out more episodes like this one on your screen right now or by subscribing to join the Zebra Herd. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time, bye bye.